What are you going to do for a tassel application on your farm? Are you going to use fungicide? Are you going to use insecticide? How about foliar fertilizer? What are you going to use in your operation to try to increase yield and profit this year? Corn that is this high, that's knee high, waist high, it's fun to scout. It's easy to walk around, you can see across the field. Corn at tasseling time, let's face it, it's not that much fun to be walking out through the field, but you do need to get out there and find out what's going on. Take a look at what's going on for bugs. This is one of the things that's very visible as you're walking through the field. If you've got flea beetles, if you've got corn rootworm beetles, these are things that should really be alarming to you at this stage of growth. They're very easy and inexpensive to treat for. The challenge is, how are you going to get the application equipment through the field? Are you going to fly it on or do you have a machine that can run high? When we're looking for bugs, don't just look at one species and say, you know, the only thing I'm concerned about is corn rootworm beetle because let's face it unless they're just completely eating all the silks off you probably aren't going to see a big yield loss from corn rootworm beetles alone however you have to think about there are some more other bugs out in the field there's a few of these and a few of those and a few of those and all of a sudden when you add all those things together you're at a level where you can afford to spend two to three dollars for the insecticide that'll be needed to control all the bugs in the field then when we're looking at those bugs too we have to think about next year take corn rootworm beetles for example if you've got corn rootworm beetles that means you had corn rootworm larvae feeding on your corn roots earlier in the season so your program for controlling corn rootworm in the larvae stage isn't working either we need a multiple trait product out in the field or we need to add some insecticide at planting time. Either way, controlling those adult beetles now will stop them from laying eggs and increasing your problem going into next year. So you can still help yourself out for next year's crop with a two to three dollar investment right now and chances are if you're looking at nutrients or fungicides throwing in insecticide won't cost you very much more. All right, you say two to three dollars but here's the thing. If you also are concerned about spider mites then you're going to want to bump that by a dollar or two and go to something like Brigade or maybe even a combination product like Hero. Spider mites get to be a big issue if you've been hot and dry or you're concerned things are going to be hot and dry. If you're cool and wet, you can probably get by with $2 worth of silencer at the full rate, for example, and that's going to clean out most of the bugs you've got. Just understand, it won't kill spider mites. Well, this year is certainly set up to be a big year for disease potential in almost every crop. We saw it very early in the season with lots of disease issues in wheat. That certainly has come into play in corn. We saw early reports out of Iowa and other states throughout the Corn Belt of northern corn leaf blight and some of the other major leaf diseases happening earlier than we would normally see them on most years. So when you've got a year like this where we've gotten moisture in much of the corn belt, we've got to protect that plant from the potential for disease. And when we think about, oh, I'll just get out and scout for disease, by the time you're already seeing it on the leaves, you're too late to save your yield. You're already losing some yield. And really, even though the fungicide companies will say, we've got some curative properties, that's not going to cure up a big infection and once that plant tissue has turned brown or, or has died it's not going to come back so you need to be out ahead of time with a preventative application all right and while we say that we don't believe that on every single acre of corn in the united states you need to spray a fungicide i'll tell you in our geography where we farm in south dakota we're pretty dry and we're usually pretty warm so those are not conditions that are ripe for disease but in a cooler wetter year that's where you've really got to think about this and basically you're just playing the odds so so if, yes, I realize the corn price is down, but if you've got good yield potential, everything else is kind of set up for you, and you've got the right environment to have disease, you've got a much better chance for it to pay flat out. And I know that it costs money to have somebody run across your field, whether it's with a ground rig or aerial application, so you've got to run those numbers yourself. But if nothing else, if you're in an area that's had disease before, you've got the right conditions for disease, I'd at least be doing some of the acres, where maybe it's your best fields and split fields, things like that. So so now you have data going forward where you can say, yep, I gained 11 bushels or uh, no, I didn't really pay. I only gained three bushels, things like that. Try to get your own data developed over time. One of the questions we've been getting recently from farmers has been, all right, so you say fungicides don't move around in the plant much. How am I going to get coverage all the way down my eight, nine, 10 foot tall corn plant? Well, the real answer is you're not going to get coverage all the way down to the ground and you really don't need it. When we've got early timings for fungicide applications, like in that V5 to V7 range, that's a spot where you can protect the lower part of your plant 
but now that we're, we're talking big, tall plants, you really want to protect down to the ear leaf. That's the most important ones that are going to be gaining uh, energy for you to fill out that ear later on in the season. So you do want to have good coverage. You do want to try and use as much pressure and as small a droplet as you can to push down through that canopy, at least to the ear leaf. And that's what you're shooting for with this application. All right, the other thing, let's talk about foliar fertilizer real quick. We're not huge believers in, oh, I got to do lots of foliar treatments or anything else, but to do a little bit, probably is going to be worth it on your farm if you've been doing tissue sampling and you find out, hey, I'm deficient on boron. I'm deficient, deficient, deficient. Maybe you need a little boron. Maybe you need a little nitrogen, a little sulfur. With all the rains we had early in the year, those leachable nutrients, nitrogen, sulfur, and boron, are more at risk this year than in a normal year. Take a look at each one of these things we talked about individually on your farm to see if it's something that could pay, and then analyze your farm on a field-by-field -field basis to see where and where not you may choose a tassel time application. Well, another thing you'll need to scout each one of your fields for, unfortunately, is our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to control it coming up later in the show.